Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Just a quick video before the gym. In the last one, we spoke about, can you be too old to start TRT? And is there a time we should come off of therapy because you're just too old? In short, no. So there is a natural decline of testosterone levels with age. It's accelerated in our society because we live in a sick society. There is no biological advantage in lowering testosterone levels. Healthy testosterone levels confer a health benefit. So strive to have healthy hormone levels for as long as you can. And if you need TRT, TRT is there, but it's not a cure-all fix-all as we said before. It's the foundation and TRT is the catalyst. So let's flip this round. As I said in the last video, the age range at the men's health clinic is between 18 and 80. Yes, wow, 80. But yet more scarily, 18. Now this is tragic. Why are these young guys having low testosterone? Once you've excluded a pathology, MRI brain, ultrasound testicles, you've had a complete workup and you've got confirmed low testosterone, why should you not start TRT? Well, let's again look at this holistically. We need to be on top of stress reduction, sleep hygiene, nutrition, and exercise. If you're on top of all of these things and you're still feeling the negative symptoms of low testosterone, is there a reason why you should, go, should not go on TRT at 18 years old? Well, testosterone deficiency, as we said in previous videos, is a diagnosis of exclusion. You should do everything within your power not to need TRT. Now, we're on this planet for a finite amount of time. 90 years, hopefully. I want to be fit and healthy for 90 years. But if you're not fit and healthy at 18 years old, 20 years old, 22 and you're doing all of the right things and you've excluded a pathology why should you be denied testosterone replacement therapy which could fix you to the point that it's going to normalize your testosterone levels to allow you to then put the work in to feel the reward now it's not a flippant decision it's always a considered decision and you must understand that the road to hormone optimization can be long and it can be a little bit troublesome to start off with. Now, interestingly, these guys do actually, actually do really well because they have struggled for a long time. And yeah, weird, isn't it? Struggling for a long time at 18, 20, 22 years old. Now, if you have an, un an appreciation of what it's necessary to be healthy, and you're implementing all of these things, TRT, as I said before, can be the catalyst to effect a positive change. If you're morbidly obese, as we've said in previous videos, your physiology is gonna fight against you. Now, again, this is a difficult one, isn't it? Because we don't wanna to commit to a lifelong therapy if you can reverse things naturally. But if you've got low testosterone and low SHBG, as a result of metabolic syndrome, and you go on a calorie deficit, you're gonna raise SHBG, lower free testosterone even more, and feel even worse. You're gonna have poor sleep, you're gonna make poor choices when it comes to nutrition, and you're not gonna be ready to go in the gym hard and heavy to lose those pounds. Again, this is why it's such a considered decision and shouldn't be made flippantly. Now, there's no reason to fear testosterone or testosterone replacement therapy. If done correctly, yes, microdosing, testosterone and HCG, you should not fear going on therapy, even when you're young. Now, why is that? Well, traditional testosterone monotherapy suppresses the HPG axis. So you no longer send signals down to the testicles to produce testosterone. You get testicular atrophy 
And so testosterone monotherapy is old school. It's outdated. So as you guys know, we utilize HCG. HCG mimics luteinizing hormone. It's going to help preserve testicular size and function and hopefully give you that sense of well-being and libido that you don't get with testosterone monotherapy. So if you did decide to come off therapy, and again, before you go on, understand it should be considered a lifelong therapy. But if you did come off therapy, at least you've got functioning testicles. So hopefully when your brain recognizes it's got no longer got testosterone, it's gonna be able to send the LH and FSH down to the testicles to produce testosterone. Now, it should have been doing that anyway, but if you've made some positive steps towards optimizing your health, is there a reason then, now you've corrected all these things and you are literally fighting fit, you should come off therapy? Well, lots of our guys forget how they felt. And we go through years and they say, I think I'm gonna come off doc. The vast majority contact me within two months and say, I wanna go back on doc. Because again, before starting therapy, if everything's in check, there's no pathology, your lifestyle's in check, your stress, your sleep, your nutrition, your exercise, and you couldn't get healthy testosterone levels, then ergo, you needed testosterone. And as I said, we should always consider testosterone replacement therapy as a lifelong therapy. Only go on it if you need it. There are a few guys that do come off it successfully. Now, it's typically because they were started on it inappropriately. So we've got a few guys who have come from other clinics and were doubtful of their diagnosis, doubtful of the real need. But as you know on the internet, it's sell, sell, sell. Testosterone will give you muscles. Testosterone will improve your libido. Testosterone will cure all of your ills. And it's not that simple, is it? As we said before, we need to adopt a holistic approach to health. And longevity, sustainability can only be attained by using this along with this and doing the best that you can to be the best person that you can. So perhaps another question do young guys need a higher dose because they're banging it out in the gym? Or they do they need a lower dose? Now, as we said before, healthy hormone levels are healthy hormone levels. And you should safely and effectively titrate the dose according to response for optimal hormone levels. Interestingly, the dosage range is between five. I've got one guy who's taking 35 milligrams a day but you would not believe the size of him. I can't unfortunately divulge his name, but he has got normal levels, but because he's a monster, he needs more testosterone because he's got more androgen receptors, more muscle mass, et cetera, et cetera, to maintain his optimal well-being. So who needs these tiny bits of testosterone? So as we said before, Older guys don't need less testosterone because they're older. They need the same amount to achieve the same levels because healthy levels are healthy levels. Well, interestingly, yeah, it's the younger guys that need less testosterone. Why is that? Because I'm vibrant. I'm, I want to be full of life. I want to be banging out in the gym six days a week. I want to live life to the full. And yes, you do. But HCG. Human chorionic gonadotrophin. Say that three times real fast. HCG preserves testicular size and function. And so you're obviously gonna produce intratesticular testosterone. So the younger guys tend to rely more on HCG than the older guys who are a little bit further down the road of life. So yeah, we tend to start younger guys on a slightly lower dose of testosterone, but a normal dose of HCG because the HCG picks up the slack. Well, I say it picks up the slack, it does the work that we want it to do. And we're really supplementing with testosterone to get your levels to optimal. Now a guy asked me the other day, what about just HCG monotherapy? 
as we said in a previous video, it just doesn't work. So again, we're comparing apples and oranges. Luteinizing hormones sent down in a pulsatile manner. HCG has to be constant and you're gonna get potential oversaturation of the receptors and subsequent downregulation. And you can't titrate the dose effectively. We tend to see this in guys where you can sometimes get a massively elevated testosterone level on a very normal dose. And then 10, 11 weeks down the road, that dose, that level decreases because the HCG receptors, well, the LH receptors have been overstimulated. And then it reaches a nice little baseline and an equilibrium. So yeah, we titrate down to sometimes five milligrams of testosterone stipulate a day, which seems absurd, isn't it? Because 30% of that is the ester. But yeah, again, all you need to do, all you need to do is safely and effectively titrate your dose according to response to give you healthy hormone levels for longevity, for sustainability, to allow you to put the work in to do what? Earn your reward.